Gold. Flush with the ardent fervor of Isabella and Ferdinand, Castile, and Aragon. Fresh from having swept the Moors from their land. Now consolidate. Now expand. Navigators sent sailing. Lost and desiccated sailors endlessly drifting in the Sargasso Sea. To come upon the Carib Islands. Fierce and feared holders of sovereignty before the brocade, and ironclad men on horses breached the waters of the fabled what they thought India. A constant row between right and wrong but no time to consider, moving on and inland, up and down the coasts, over Cuba, Mexico, Peru. The months of rain, rotten ships no longer capable of getting overwhelmed sailors home. From Madrid calling and collecting silver, gold, pearls, emeralds. In 40 years New Spain was settled. Brothers and sister-in-laws. Mothers and wives. Domestic pigs. The horse which gave them conquest in the battlefields of Mexico and Peru. The cathedral. The shrines to the Blessed Mary. A patron saint. The inhabitants of New World towns and cities living the imagination brought with them from their ecclesiastical homeland, Spain, the gathering, and expanding realm of erudition and art cloistered off from the rest of Europe which still wallowed in the stupor of centuries spent at each other's throats. Spain would soon follow the pattern set as she was on the road to expansion. Mapmakers called to the Queen. Counselors summoned. Viceroys to the court from Lima requesting more titles and lands. Is there gold, sir? She wanted to know. There was gold. They found rooms with walls covered with the bright yellow metal. They rode into battle, scores against thousands, and killed many. And for thirty years the native people lived in fear and hatred. But one night at an arranged celebration of the Christmas Eve, the warrior people of Peru took the governor conquistador captive. Burning hot molten gold into his mouth they questioned him, How much do you love the yellow metal? Christmas comes but once a year and order was restored. Conquest would conquer. This new Spain in Peru could not really be seen as separate from its mother. All the trappings of home were attempted. Cathedrals. Princely mansions. Governments and petitions. Counters of the trade. Seaports, docks and wharfs. Towns and cities although the streets were filled and mud so that a highly lady would be dirted paying a social visit. And they prayed fervently to their God to show them how to save the heathen and if kindly he would show them the way to more and more gold. Which he did by way of stories from galleons from the east, from the China trade. Stories of lands fabulously rich in gold. So fabulously rich in gold they could be called Solomon Islands. Paul Gonzalez Castro came from a good family back in Spain, but here in Peru he languished and could not realize his dreams, which like many others of the conquistadors was to find enough gold so they could remain the rest of their lives without the need to toil. He talked to the citizens of Lima about taking ships to the now fabled Solomon Islands where they would find gold enough to make them royalty. Here in the carved stone mansions with adobe roofs, with candlelit shadows in evening porticos, breezes from the not-too-distant forests, guitar strings plucked by grandiose flamenco artists they talked of gold and the achieving of gold. They talked and they talked, but these men who had never done anything much useful in their lives were not about to devise a plan to take a ship or a small fleet of ships across the still widely unknown greatest expanse of ocean. But here the uncanny steps in and Lima is visited by a buccaneer of merit and leadership. Knowledge of the oceans uncontested. He listened to the empty heavy-hearted, and should I also say empty-headed, Peruvians and realized he could make these men work for him. Captain Tento La Sola, known as Boulet to his adoring crews, was born in Spain to a prominent Jewish family. Because of the policy of convert or be burned at the stake, the family chose to emigrate as many a Moorish enclave had done before them. It will be hard to leave this place, Tento's father said. Ma La Sola, his mother, was stricken with remorse, saying in response to her husband, my heart will die as the sun and the sands are made behind us. How, after all these times? Mother, 
Why don't we convert? Asked 13-year-old Tenta. Son, hasn't the good education we are giving you by the Arab scribes had any effect on you? A man, a person, must be true to his beliefs. It was his father speaking. I know, father. But I wanted to be an astronomer. I need my teaching in mathematics. Tento's sister, Yelanda, diverted her brother's attention. They moved away from their parents. Uncle Skafai says we are going to Barcelona, and there we will be able to find a ship to take us to Africa. Yelanda was excited with the prospect of Barcelona as she had always heard tales of intrigue and adventure about the seaport city. A year older than Tento, she was possessed of a good mind and had taken lessons from the Arab teachers just like her brother. But what's in Africa? How will we learn anything? Yelanda, I should not want to go to sea. I've heard it's a terrible life with terrible men who do terrible things. Mustn't we get to Africa by sea? Of course, you silly. But we have no choice. Mother and father will be burned to death if we stay here. Our fates are joined, Tento, by something wonderful and magical. You will see. As the family went about preparing for their journey to Barcelona they visited with their relatives. Crying and sadness enough. They had had a good life in Spain. What was ahead would be difficult. Uncle Schiff tried to encourage everyone. Do not think it will be all bad. As you know, your cousin Val and his family, and Beatrice with all her children. A lot of people we know have already left and most likely will be in Africa ahead of you, and you shall join with them. What do you know of the sea and Africa, Schiff? You have never left this town. I have studied and I am a scholar. Please show some respect. The perception of the young people was heightened by all this and they knew for sure one thing, the old people were scared. Barcelona was indeed a scary place. There was danger lurking everywhere. But there was also much beauty and romance. The smell and taste of the sea air stirred feelings of imagination in the newly arrived family. Tento and Yelanda were keen on learning as much as possible about the city and both secretly harbored the wish to escape the lurking departure to Africa, especially when such a city seemed capable of many fine days of exploring. Only too shortly they knew their parent will have made the arrangements and then gone, lost forever the tie to their native land. In their hearts grew a great hatred for the Spanish kings, lords and gentry, ministers and cardinals, who drove them into the sea. I love you, dear Yelanda. We shall never part. So Tento told his sister after an afternoon racing in and around the docks and wharfs, merchant stores, and parks of the port city. That night, as the family slept, a press gang entered their quarters taking Tento and carrying him on board a ship which left the harbor before dawn, taking him to the new world. The boy who did not want to go to sea would now be ship's company, and if this voyage proved him to be unworthy for shipboard life, he would be sold as servant or slave in Jamaica. Wake up young man. You need to be shown your work. One of the sailors was standing over him. The pitch and roll of the ship made itself known to Tento, who for the first time consciously became aware of the ship's movement. How different this is from everything I know, he thought. I am hungry. He told the man trying to get him out of his bunk which was a tiny thing in a space tight packed with men sleeping similarly arranged. We will eat, but first you and I must secure one of the ship's boats that came loose. Not properly rigged for sea, I suppose, and a good chance to teach you how to do a thing right. They went about the work, and Tento took to asking questions about where they were and where they were going. Most of the answers were not to his satisfaction, but to one he felt he got what he wanted. Do you know where they take Jews who are fleeing to Africa? The man knew and, stopping for a moment, told Tento, they go to Algeria, where there is a Jewish community. They have set themselves up as merchants and traders, doing very nice. A new Spain of their own. The devil of a place, I'm sure went through Tento's mind. I will be there. 
I will see them. It was this small conversation which marked for the first time the churning of resentment which sprung in him now whenever Spain became the subject. Captain Tento La Sola now stood in the company of these far dreaming citizens of Lima. My ship is at your disposal, gentlemen, but we will need more. A trip to your islands, what do you call them? Solomon, will very likely have its danger and more than one vessel will be needed if you would like to see Peru again. As the Peruvians had no intentions of staying on the other side of the Pacific, just wanting to get enough gold to make themselves rooted wealth, owners of a carefree life, they agreed to make at least one more ship available. When they advertised that a voyage seeking great treasures would be undertaken with the great Captain Tento heading the venture, ship owners gave some consideration. Lima was alive with discussions of this audacious proposal. Three ships would throw their lot in. They assembled three months later in the roads off the coast setting a course north and west, as they were starting to learn of ocean currents which could carry a ship across the Pacific to their destination. On board were men, women, and children. Excitement was the word of the day. Nothing less than a carnival atmosphere for this spontaneous group. Singing and dancing as they slipped off the coast past native fishermen on their sea rafts, the last people they would see for many months. On board his ship, Boulet stood surveying the flotilla, his sister Yelan died at his side. Algeria had been breached. Certainty proved a good and true name for his ship.